In this video, I hope to clear up some confusion uh, regarding the Knights or Kenites, the Giants, the Nephilim, and the Messiah, and show how these are all tied together. So, if you haven't seen the other video, we've proven that the Nephilim from Genesis 6 are in fact the Cainites those from the line of Cain. This is well known. All you'd have to do is open up your uh, art scroll, stone edition, and it tells you right there in the commentaries. And I gave a ton of evidence. Now here is a translation from the Talmud, and I'm going to show why there's so much confusion regarding the Nephilim. It's because sometimes you'll see them translated as the giants but really the Torah tells us if you if you look closely at the details that it's they're different but related okay so we know that the Nephilim are the Cainites and here we have the Nephilim from Genesis 6 and if you don't believe me and you don't believe the sources you can believe the Gematria because it tells us uh, they both have the same value, which is 215. The reason there's so much confusion, and this never, ever gets brought up in any of the Parsha studies, because um, last week we were on this portion of the Torah, and you'll never get anybody to even acknowledge that there's two spellings going on here of Nephilim. And then we have in the middle the children of Anak, or the sons of Anak, who, who is the giant. This means giant. This actually means like giant. And here we have the Nephilim, as it is spelled in Genesis 6 and other places. And then we have this spelling with the extra Yud here. Now, I've shown in a past video something kind of spooky, actually. It's way too coincidental, um, that if you use the Atbash cipher on the text of the Torah, this spelling of the Nephilim and this spelling actually have the same value. Um, it's very, very odd, but let's move on. So here we have the original spelling of the Nephilim. So these would be the fallen ones. Uh, this is from Genesis 6-4. And then when you look at the spelling here, there's no extra Yud. Now this is significant. This is the original spelling, so the fallen. This, but it's here uh, translated as the giants. I would change that, and I'll show you why. But here's the source. Have you heard when the son of, we'll say here, giants will come? Rabbi Yitzhak said to him, who is the son of Nifle, we'll say, because that's really what it says. Rav Nachman said to him, He is the Messiah. Rabbi Yitzhak asked him, Do you call the Messiah son of Nifle? Rav Nachman said to him, Yes, as it is written, On that day I will establish the tabernacle of David that is fallen. From Amos 9.11 That is why the Messiah is called Bar Nifle. Rabbi Yitzhak said to him that this is what Rabbi Yochanan says. During the generation in which the Messiah, son of David, comes, Torah scholars decrease, and as for the rest of the people, their eyes fail with sorrow and grief, and troubles increase, and the harsh decrees will be introduced. Before the first one passes, the second one quickly comes. Now, if you're wondering... Why it's called Bar Nifle? Here's some more. <coughs> here's some more evidence for the idea that the Nephilim are in fact the Cainites. Who is David's father? Who is King David's father? It is Jesse. Everybody knows this. Now here's um, a Kabbalistic text, the Gate of Reincarnations, by Rabbi Yitzhak Luria and uh, Rabbi Chaim Vital. This is a well-known Kabbalistic text, the Gate of Reincarnations. And here is 
a little bit I found on those who come from the line of Cain. And just have a look at some of these names. <laughs> we have Otniel ben Kenaz, who is Yabetz. But then when you look a little closer, you'll notice Jesse, the father of David, the Cainite, the Nephilim. This is the tie between the son of Nephle and the Cainite line. 